The Home Mortgage Law Show is a paid program and is intended as a resource guide for education, information, and entertainment purposes and is not intended to provide specific legal advice. The information that you hear should not be used as a substitute for competent legal advice from a professional attorney. Hiring of an attorney is an important decision which should not be based on advertising or the information that you hear today. You're listening to the Home Mortgage Law Show brought to you by the law offices of Morris DuPont. 866-610-NEWS. We are taking calls right now and it's toll free to call the experts. Shay DuPont, attorney Shay DuPont and attorney Michelle Hanash, our bankruptcy uh, attorney. We're with you every Saturday from 2 until 4 on News Talk 610-100.3 WIOD and 970 WFLA. 866-610-NEWS. 866-610-6397. AT&T Wireless Customer Star 610. I really do think it's a point that I want to drive home a little more because Randy's call brought up a very important point concerning people who are self-employed. Very often we have people come into the office and they do not believe that they can qualify for a loan modification or that they can qualify for a short sale because they are self-employed so they don't have these pay checks, these pay stubs that they believe that the lender requires in order to see what their income is. When in fact, of course, a lender will do a loan modification or agree to a short sale for a borrower who is self-employed, but you need to be able to show profit and loss statements. And some people just don't know about profit and loss statements. They have their accountant once a year do their taxes for them. Of course, the accountant is actually putting together a profit and loss statement. But for a loan modification, what we typically would need at this time of year, we would need third quarter P&Ls, the third quarter of the business profit and loss statements, but they're not complicated to do. We use Regal Tax Advisory Group to put together these profit and loss statements for our clients that do not have the ability to do this on their own. And it's a very simple process. It doesn't take long. It simply reflects the gross revenue for the business minus the business expenses and that equals a net revenue. And the net revenue is then divided by the number of months that uh, the uh, profit and loss statement reflects. And that would then in turn be the person's individual gross monthly income. Now, people have said to me, well, what if I just take a salary from the business and let's say that the business is then holding in their account $50,000? Well, trust me, a lender will attribute that $50,000 of money in the business account as income to you because you can't then manipulate your business account to show money and just be paying yourself a salary to reflect a lower amount when you're trying to get a loan modification because as by now you all understand that a loan modification is based on gross monthly income times 31% equaling what a monthly mortgage payment should be, actually reflecting what we call PITIH, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and homeowners association fee. So if you make $5,000 a month in gross income, then your 31% figure is $1,550, and that is what you should be paying for principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and homeowners association fee. Let's say you have a homeowners association fee of $150 a month, and your 31% was $1,550. We would subtract the $150 from that, bringing us to a number of $1,400. $1,400 is what you should be paying as a monthly mortgage payment to your lender, which would include the escrowing of taxes and insurance. If you can show that currently your monthly mortgage payment is $1,800, then you can qualify for a loan modification. Why? Because you're paying more than 31% of your gross monthly income towards your monthly housing expense. And if you are currently paying $1,200 towards your monthly housing expense, that would be principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and homeowners association fee, then it would be very difficult to qualify you for a loan modification because you're already paying less than 31% of your gross monthly income towards your monthly housing expense. But do not despair. Even if you are paying less than 31% of your gross monthly income towards your monthly housing expense, I still encourage you to call the law firm of Morris DuPont. Why? Well, because 
Fannie Mae alone has a program called Fannie Mod 24. Yes, it's a unique program. Only Fannie Mae has this program, and it allows Fannie Mae to modify a mortgage to create a monthly mortgage payment that is, in fact, 24% of your gross monthly income. Can you imagine? That would be an incredible savings. But you don't don't even know today if you've got a Fannie or a Freddie loan. Well, you can always call the law firm of Morris DuPont, schedule your free consultation, and we will do the legwork for you. We will determine whether or not it's a Fannie or a Freddie loan, whether it's a GSE, whether it you are paying more or less than 31% or 24%, or available for a streamlined loan mod, another great Fannie Mae pr- uh, program that's available. We will do all of that for you at, in the consultation. Remember, it's free, and there are offices in St. Petersburg, Tampa, Dadeland, Doral, Fort Lauderdale, Aventura, Plantation, Boca Raton, and West Palm Beach, where we can meet and we can help you determine whether or not you can qualify for loan modification. And if you can't because you're paying less than 31%, I always then go a little further with people that come in that are believing that it's their monthly mortgage payment that is causing them to fall behind on other payments, that is causing them to be living paycheck to paycheck, because sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's that unsecured debt that you're servicing every month, that those credit card payments, those medical bills. And that's when I ask Michelle to come into consultations, Michelle, at least once a week, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of the times uh, we see clients perhaps who couldn't qualify for a loan modification because of this other debt that the lender has to consider in their budget. Uh, that's my understanding when I come into the meetings that this can Absolutely. be a real problem. Right. So in those instances, it's a bankruptcy or alternatively debt settlement that could address this debt to help you qualify for the loan modification. Otherwise, even if you file a bankruptcy, the principles regarding loan modification would be the same outside of the bankruptcy or if you're fi- uh, applying for a loan modification after you filed for bankruptcy, which is also something you can do. The the way a bankruptcy could help you qualify for a loan modification is if you have this other debt that is a problem for your loan modification. And also it helps address if you have other liens on the property. Maybe you have a second mortgage. Maybe you have a HELOC. And in that case, the bankruptcy could potentially help you with your loan modification. And it could also get rid of these other liens you have on your property. Wipe them out completely. Exactly. So you have you might have a second mortgage on the property, and a bankruptcy could actually wipe that out completely. Can you imagine? So there's great alternatives, but you won't know what those alternatives are. You won't understand what the options are that are available to you today or what aren't available to you today. I I would really hate to believe that you would be trying to qualify for a loan modification and doing all that work you on your own when I could tell you in a simple hours consultation that in fact, I don't believe you're going to qualify for loan modification. But remember, we just got those numbers back. There's plenty of loan modifications that people are qualifying for, getting great principal reductions, $574 reduction in their monthly mortgage payment on average. That's what we'd like to see for you, but you've got to call us to make it happen. And that number is 1-800-974-2712. That's the toll-free number for the law firm of Morris DuPont. 1-800-974-2712. You don't want to do that? Well, then stick around and you can call us right here on the show, the Home Mortgage Law Show. Plenty more right after this. You're listening to the Home Mortgage Law Show brought to you by the law offices of Morris DuPont, 866-610-NEWS. That's our studio number. Pick up the phone and call us, 866-610-6397. AT&T Wireless customer, Star 610. Joining us today, attorneys Shay DuPont and Michelle Hanash, our bankruptcy attorney. Oh, and actually, Michelle had some very good questions that she is now hearing from the bankruptcy trustees because of the amount of loan modifications that are actually being done through the bankruptcy courts. Right. So the bankruptcy attorneys, usually once a month for each judge, we have to spend all day in court. And we we talk amongst ourselves and we talk with the trustees about the pressing issues. And this past week, what everyone wanted to know was really what happens when you're going for a loan modification 
and you have a second mortgage. So we all know by now, especially if you've been listening to the show, that your uh, mortgage payment is going to be calculated at 31%, and that includes principal, interest, uh, taxes, and insurance, and your homeowners association. But what happens when you have a second mortgage? Is that part of the 31%? Is it out excluded from the 31%? That's a really great question that I don't think I've addressed in a long time. The second mortgage, any second mortgage, is not included in this calculation. So we're only dealing with the first mortgage, and the first mortgage holder considers any other liens on the property, including a second mortgage or a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, completely irrelevant to the calculation. So when you are doing this calculation at home, which I don't recommend. I recommend you have me do it for you. But if you're going to try and do it on your your own, do not include the second mortgage in that calculation. And also, I think it's important to bring up that these calculations that I'm talking about relate solely to your primary residence. That is not the way to calculate whether or not you want to do a loan modification on your investment property. The way that I do that in a in a consultation with someone is I first look to see if the lo- loan is a Fannie or Freddie backed because I know then there can't be a principal reduction, only a principal deferral when it's a Fannie or Freddie FHA VA. If it is not a, a GSE backed loan, then I know that I can probably get a principal reduction on that investment property if the numbers come in right. And what will a lender normally reduce principal to? Well, current market value plus 15%. So if you show me what the current market value of your investment property is, I simply multiply that by 115%. And then I use my handy dandy smartphone app for a mortgage calculator. You're a hit at the cocktail parties, I'm sure. (laughs) Can you imagine how much I'm not? Oh, there's Shay, the housing geek with her, again. With her app. <laughs> yeah. And, and my, uh, you know, my uh, calculator over there in the corner. So I use that mortgage calculator app and I plug in your current market value plus 15% number that your investment property is worth. I put the term at 40 years because that's as far out as a lender will extend the loan. And I use the interest rate of 2%, which we know is the lowest the lender will go as far as reducing the interest rate. I then will receive a principal and interest payment. I fold back into that the escrow and the homeowners association. And in the consultation, I then let the person know, look, even at the best case scenario, the new monthly mortgage payment that you would be able to get through a loan modification on this investment property is, let's say, $950. That is the best that could be done. And you're, you're able to rent this property at $1,250. So the reduction would be off of your old mortgage payment. Maybe the old mortgage payment was $1,550. It will not, it, that's going to be a $600 a month reduction but it's still going to only be $300 a month difference between what you're going to be paying P-I-T-I-H and what the tenant is going to be giving you. So is that enough to make you want to get a try for a loan modification or do you think a short sale makes more sense? That of course is up to the individual. But if it's the opposite, if we know now that the best case scenario for an investment property, 40 years, 2%, the lender reduces it down uh, the the uh, mortgage principal down to current market value plus fifteen percent. If the best case scenario for that is twelve fifty, and your tenant is only paying you nine fifty, then I would strongly encourage that person to instead short sale the property and get out of it because it's never going to make sense. The numbers are never going to be in their favor. That person is just basically being a property manager on behalf of the lender for the next 15, 20 years, or let's say until the current market value of the property exceeds the principal balance of the mortgage. So a lot of times the numbers don't make sense on these investment properties when they have negative equity on them. Well, that's really interesting. I think it's good for for people to know. I hear things all the time. Oh, but you have to pay a certain percentage of the rental income or uh, things that apparently don't really matter. 
Well, it, it matters if, when the lender is trying to calculate whether or not they're going to qualify you for a loan modification. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, the lenders do not make available to us what those calculations are when they're using investment, uh, when they're doing it for investment properties. We know exactly what the formulas are for someone to qualify for loan modification on their primary residence. It's a very easy formula. It's gross monthly income times 31% equals monthly housing expense, and I've expounded on that. There is a secondary qualifier that a lot of people are unaware of, and this is where most people trip up on their loan modification application. And that formula is net income minus personal and household expenses must equal a surplus. Now, what does that mean? That means that let's say that you are showing gross monthly income of $5,000 a month and your net monthly income is $3,500 a month. You should not have household expenses, including your mortgage payments, your taxes, your insurance, your gas, your food, your grooming, all of the personal expenses you have every month. You should not have household and personal expenses of more than $34.50 because you should have that $50 a month surplus. Even even that your old uh, mortgage payment that you couldn't afford? Yes. That's why people trip up. They assume, oh, if I've got to include my old monthly mortgage payment in that, I've got to show a deficit in order to show why I have been missing my mortgage payment and why I'm struggling. But that's where the lender tricks you because that is not what you need to show a deficit. You need to show, even with the old monthly mortgage payment included, you were running a $50 a month or so, on average, surplus. Why? Because the lender knows these aren't all of your expenses. They know you go to the movie. They know you get your hair cut. They know you go out to dinner. They know that these aren't all of your expenses. So what they're looking for is really one of the ways to trick you, I would say, because they don't clearly show that they're doing that formula behind the scenes. They do it, but it doesn't show up in the application. So that's one of the things that you want a professional to be working on because, of course, we don't submit an application that's showing a huge deficit. It just isn't going to be able to qualify for loan modification. Now, the let's do the reverse. In a short sale, <laughs> you'll want to show a big deficit. You want to show that this house is completely unaffordable no matter what the lender did. So when you are qualifying for a short sale, when you're putting that application together to qualify to short sale your property, you want to show net income minus personal and household expenses equals a deficit. And the bigger, the better. Why? Because you don't want the lender to see any uh, any sort of surplus because the lender is going to come back and say, well, wait a minute. Now, you want us to do a short sale. You want us to approve that the property sells for less than what we're owed. You want us to forgive some of the principal balance. You want us to pay the real estate fees. You want us to pay the closing costs. And you're running a hundred dollar a month surplus. Uh, yeah, we'll take a cash contribution at closing, please. And so you, that's the kind of issues that you can run into. You know, I could go on and on. We don't have enough time to talk about all of the pitfalls that are out there when putting together these applications. We talk so often about the great results that you can achieve through a loan modification, or through a short sale. We talked today about the new Obama scorecard that just came out showing that 72% of people, the 1.2 million people who have received loan modifications thus far, have received a principal reduction. But we don't talk about all the different ways that we could mess it up. So we're going to do that more in the next segment. 1-800-974-2712. That's the toll-free number to reach the law firm of Morris DuPont. Book your free consultation now. 1-800-974-2712. If you're in the Tampa Bay area, if you're in South Florida, pick up the phone and call. Book your free consultation. 1-800-974-2712. Much more of the Home Mortgage Law Show right after this. (laughs) 
to the Home Mortgage Law Show, brought to you by the law firm of Morris DuPont. We have attorneys Shay DuPont right here and also Michelle Hanash, our bankruptcy attorney, here to answer your questions, your concerns, give you the options and the answers that you so seek. 1-866-610-NEWS, 866-610-6397. AT&T Wireless customers, it's simple, star 610. And before the break, we were talking about applications to your lenders for loss mitigation, whether it was for a loan modification or whether it is for a short sale. I was trying to really offer some tips that the law firm of Morris DuPont uh, uses to uh, increase the chance of a loan modification or short sale application being approved. One of those things, it's very, very easy, but we find that it is very, very helpful, is that we numerically... Um, uh, go through every single page and number the page that we're going to submit because a loan mod application or a short sale application is typically between 75 and 120 pages long. So when you submit them and you always do it by fax, that is the way the lender wants to receive them by fax. So you don't want to be mailing those in. Certified letter is irrelevant. You always want to be faxing things to your lender because that's the way they're set up most efficiently to receive documents. You want to first n- numerically number each number each one of those pages, one through, let's say, 120, so that later when you are speaking to your SPOC, your single point of contact, you can uh, say, well, she's saying, well, uh, we didn't receive uh, page two of your tax return. Well, yes, you did. You received page 77, didn't you? Well, look in the lower right-hand corner. Yes, we have page 77. And you received page 79, all right? Yes, we received page 79. Well, then you received page 78 because I have a fax confirmation that you received 120 pages. And 72 hours after I submitted that application to you by fax, you can confirm that you received 120 pages. So 70, page 78 is there somewhere. You just need to look a little harder for it, which is something that your single point of contact really doesn't like to do. What happens is when you submit these applications to the lender and you submit a 120-page fax to them, it, that fax is actually broken down into smaller components and it is imaged into your file by a department that is Um, tasked with doing that. So when they image it into your file, they're not necessarily imaging it back in perfect chronology. So you have to work with your SPOC to get it back so that they can show again that they received every page and it will not slow down your application. So that's probably the easiest tip I can give you. Anytime you're submitting anything to your lender, you want to make sure that you number the pages and confirm that they received receipt of all of those pages. Because probably the thing that slows down short sale or loss mitigation applications, loan mod applications, the easiest way and the most frequent way is that the application is deemed incomplete. It is not complete. And it's interesting, you know, the way that the lenders train the people that do this is very unique. If you send in, let's say, a tax return and it is not signed on page two, the lender doesn't come back to you and say, we received your tax return, but you didn't sign it on page two. Therefore, we need you to resend it. No, 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 no. What the lender says is, we did not receive your tax return. Why? Because your single point of contact didn't receive your tax return. Because the imaging department realized that you didn't sign it on page two, so they did not image it into your computer file. They dumped it. It is not. It was not received by your single point of contact because it was deemed insufficient. But no one explains that to you when you're going through the loan modification process. So your frustration with, I already sent you those documents. I sent them to you two weeks ago. I by a, certified mail. Oh, yeah, by <laughs> certified mail. Exactly. You know, these are the things that are frustrating for the borrower, and the lender does not try to help facilitate it and make it clear what the real issue is. So you could be sending those tax returns to them over and over and over again, 
yet they never tell you that, well, you didn't follow the instructions that, that you received in the initial application, and that is that, that you must sign your tax return on page two, but you know that your accountant files your tax returns and that space is blank or it is says filed electronically. And in fact, your lender wants you to wipe that out and actually physically sign your name to a tax return. There's lots of different ways that the lender tries to trip you up. You sometimes might think that the lender is your friend. They want to help you. They're trying to help you qualify for these programs, but in fact, they are working against you. I mean, really, we were just reporting earlier on the Obama scorecard through September of this year, that the average reduction, the average monthly mortgage payment reduction when you qualify for a loan modification is $547 per month. Do you think your lender wants to receive $547 less every month from you? Of course not. They want to receive as much as they possibly can. And they know if you get a loan modification, if you qualify, if they're backed into a corner to give it to you, that they're going to have to lower your monthly mortgage payment. How do they do it? By lowering your interest rate, extending the term, and where necessary, giving you a principal reduction. They don't want to do it. You've got to force them. How do you back them into that corner? Well, you start by calling the law firm of Morris DuPont. And our number is 800 974-2712. That's 800-974-2712. There are people in the office today who can take your phone call and schedule that free consultation for you. And I'm happy to meet with you in any of our offices in Tampa, St. Petersburg, Dadeland, Doral, Fort Lauderdale, Aventura, Plantation, Boca Raton, West Palm Beach. Free consultation. I'm there to see whether or not I can qualify you for any of these government programs. If I don't think I can, I will give you alternatives. If you are living paycheck to paycheck, if you're not able to meet your monthly financial obligations, if you have an interest rate that is above five and a half percent, why? When today there are programs out there that can get you into a modified term, which will include 2% interest rate and extend that loan out to 40 years if that's what you'd like to see happen. And so there's no reason to be paying higher interest than that. And it's not a refinance. You do not have to use your credit information. Your credit score is irrelevant. What the lender is doing is modifying the terms of your existing mortgage. That's right. They're just going to modify the terms of the account that you have today. It's not going to change your account number. There's no closing costs. That lender is simply going to agree to modify the terms of your existing mortgage. 2% is as low as they'll go. 40 years is as far out as they'll go. And let's find out how much principal they'll reduce because you know that they will reduce principal down to current market value and and 15%. I say that, but you've heard my Rocky segments. You know that I have gotten principal reductions for people where I've actually been able to get them a principal reduction where the lender reduced principal below current market value. So let's use an example. Uh, let's say that the uh, principal balance on the mortgage was 300000 The current market value of the property was one forty. And the lender went and reduced principal for $200,000 and took the principal balance down to $100,000. My client now has $40,000 of equity in the property. Amazing. But it could happen to you. But you won't know till you call. Or remember the, the um, website. Remember, it's homemortgagelaw.com. That's the website for the law firm of Morris DuPont, homemortgagelaw.com. You can check out our frequently asked questions, check out who we are, what we do, what different options are available to you, and you can even request a consultation through the website, through the internet. It's easy. What are you waiting for? Let's get this done before you've got to go another year and not being able to see what you could possibly 
receive as a loan modification or get out of that short sale. There you go. Carpe Diem, seize the day. Pick up the phone and call Morris DuPont, PA. 1-800-974-2712. 1-800-974-2712. If you're in your car, if you know someone that's going through a foreclosure or that needs bankruptcy assistance, now's the time to pick up the phone and call 1-800-974-2712. That is the law firm of Morris DuPont, PA, located throughout the South Florida and Tampa area. Pick up the phone and call for the nearest location or log on to our Facebook page, The Home Mortgage Law Show. Plenty more as we wrap things up right after this on The Home Mortgage Law Show. You're listening to The Home Mortgage Law Show, brought to you by the law offices of Morris DuPont. We are in the home stretch. So if you've got a concern or a question or if you're going through some sort of rut, here are the attorneys to help. We've got Shay DuPont and Michelle Hanash, our bankruptcy attorney, 866-610-NEWS. Toll free to call us here on air. You don't even have to give us your real name if you don't want to. 866-610-6397, 866-610-NEWS, AT&T Wireless Customers, star 610. As much as I love being with you ladies here, I, I do miss my partner. My name is Shay DuPont, and my partner's name is Will Morris, and he is still resting his vocal cords. We don't want him to, to injure his vocal cords any, so he's going to rest them till he's ready. But I just want to... I think he's been moonlighting on Ve- in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do miss my dear partner, my law partner, Will Morris, and we look forward to him coming back to the show as soon as he possibly can. But in the interim, I'm very happy to have Michelle Hanash, our bankruptcy counsel here with me. And then on the occasional weekend, I get to have George Fajardo, who is our director of loss mitigation. But as many of you know, George has started law school. We sort of Yay. yeah put some pressure on him. We thought he'd make a great attorney. So luckily he has started law school. So he's usually studying on the weekend. So Michelle, I really do appreciate you taking time out of your Saturdays and joining me on the Home Mortgage Law Show and talking about what's going on in the bankruptcy department and credit restoration and debt settlement over there at the law firm of Morris DuPont. Um, so tell me, what's news? We are really excited. We've been talking about it a lot, but this uh, loss mitigation program in the bankruptcy court that we are submitting loan modification applications through the bankruptcy and hoping to achieve uh, you know, a solution to all problems for, for some of our clients. So that's very exciting. Settlements are going great. We just talked earlier about our average 35% settlement that we usually see on uh, credit cards, even medical debt uh, outside of litigation. We're doing some good work on credit restoration. Let's say you've gone through uh, the process of solving your debt problems. You've reached a solution. You've put that in the past, or maybe you filed a bankruptcy, and now you don't have liability for your credit card debt any longer, and now you're in the market to perhaps purchase a home and you need financing or you need to buy a car and your credit report is holding you back. Well, that's one of the services we provide, getting that credit report as best we can, uh, fixed up, accurate, and helping you qualify for lending. I mean, we know that the lenders now are pretty tightly guarding the the financing. And so that credit report is becoming more important even than in the past. And you'd be surprised to know just how inaccurate many people's credit reports are. Even when it's accurate, there are times when we have seen, when we protest certain uh, reporting, that the lender drops it off. They're just not willing to fight it. Even if it was accurate, they don't come back in time. Therefore, if they do not respond to the credit reporting agency within a deadline time, the credit reporting agency is going to drop that information off the report. So even if it's accurate, timing-wise, it might be possible to be submitting um, credit reports or having your credit score reflect information that, that it is um, not showing the negatives that right. maybe show up two months later, but aren't on there right now. So I know timing wise, it's very important. And I have a really important question for you about student loans. Yes. There are rumors going around. <laughs> Tell me if it's true. You've heard them about it might be possible in the future that student loan debt might be able to be included in a bankruptcy? Well, currently the law says it can be discharged in a bankruptcy if you meet certain rather difficult criteria. So if you really have zero prospect of ever repaying the student loan debt, 
And usually we see in an undue hardship, and usually we see this occur in someone who had a who had an accident and physically really no longer would be able to work. Of course, there are exceptions. We talked about a funny exception on the show last week where someone made the argument that they were too difficult of a person for anyone to work with them, so they would never have the prospect of, of repaying their student loan, and it actually worked. But yes, we are hearing rumors and more willingness on some of the judges to listen to the arguments of why a student loan debt should be discharged, and you never know. Maybe we'll have the case that'll go up to the 11th Circuit and help change the law. I want that case. Yeah. I really do want that case. So if you have student loan debt and it is not possible for you to pay it off, if you have some extenuating circumstances, if you are now on long-term disability, you know that you can get it canceled, but it's something short of that, but something as possibly traumatic as that, that has occurred that makes it impossible for you to pay off those student loans, yet you are being constantly harassed uh, to uh, make payments on it. Let's take a look at your case and see whether or not we'd want to use that as a test case to see whether or not we could possibly get that student loan debt canceled for you. I would love to be able to do that for someone because, you know, there's only so much you can do through loss mitigation, loan modification, short sales, so much you can do through bankruptcy. But very often a person is still left with that student loan debt. And that can really be a huge ball and chain around someone's ankle for the rest of their life. I read for the economy, not yeah. just that individual. Good it's a point. huge, huge trillion dollar problem. For, for everyone in the United States. Because I did hear of oh, an 80-year-old woman who was looking to try to stop student loan creditors from, wow. from coming after her. 80 years 80 old. 80 years old. You know, it's yep. it's interesting to think when these uh, when the law was coming out about uh, this undue hardship and no chance ever of ever repaying your student loan debt, that's when uh, student loan debt had a five-year statute of limitations. There is now no statute of limitations on student loan debt. This is something that can follow a person around forever. And put in that context, it just seems really, uh, I don't know the right word. I think it's unfair. <laughs> yeah, that's a I good word. I think the word there is actually very, very unfair. And, you know, it does. It, it, a lot of this is not a matter of fair or not fair. What it's a matter of is that there are programs available today. You have a window of opportunity today to take advantage of these programs, whether it's the government programs, such as making home affordable, whether it's bankruptcy laws, which are in place today regarding um, being able to have a unsecured second mortgage forgiven. But these are windows of opportunity that aren't necessarily going to be here forever. You do not have the opportunity to procrastinate and yet still take advantage of these programs. Think about it. Making home affordable um, program is going to be expiring on uh, December 31st of 2015. That might seem like a long time now, but you've got to get your application in and you've got to get that permanent loan modification or short sale complete for that investment property before that deadline in order for you to be able to qualify. So let's start now instead of later. I don't want to see you thinking about, again, that New Year's Eve resolution that, oh, 20, 2014 is the year that I'm going to take care of this. Let's start taking care of it now. And the first step is you've got to give us a call so that we can help you. Contact the law firm of Morris DuPont. My name is Shay DuPont. I am one of the partners. I'm here with uh, Michelle Hanash, who runs the bankruptcy department. We're here on the air with you every Saturday. It's a live show. We've been doing it for four years. We've helped thousands of homeowners be able to either reduce their monthly mortgage payment, to short sale that property that is not making any financial sense anymore, to be able to wipe out debt through debt settlement, through bankruptcy. But you've got to do the first step. We can't do it for you. Call the law firm of Morris DuPont. It's 800 974-2712, 800-974-2712. 974 2712 800-974-2712, and there are offices in St. Petersburg, Tampa, Dadeland, Doral, Plantation, Fort Lauderdale, Aventura, Boca Raton, West Palm Beach. I was in the 
West, I was in the um, West Shore office in Tampa last week. I was in the St. Petersburg office last week, met with some really lovely people. And, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions out there. People come in, they're confused, and they, I hear it so many times. I heard it last week. I have learned more in this past hour during our consultation than I learned about these programs in the last two years. And these are people that were trying to do loan mods on their own, denied for short sales, and they finally get it. If you want to get it, you got to call it. 800-974-2712. We thank you for sharing part of your Saturday with us here at the Home Mortgage Law Show. We look forward to meeting each and every one of you when you take advantage of your free consultation. And from Mich- uh, Michelle Hanash and myself, Shay DuPont, we thank you and we wish you a wonderful rest of your weekend. And Natalie, enjoy your you. ballroom dancing this evening. Thank you so much. 1-800-974-2712. Toll-free number for the Morris DuPont Law Firm. There are offices all throughout, as Shay mentioned, from Tampa to South Florida. 1-800-974-2712. We'll see you next Saturday here on the Home Mortgage Law Show.